Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God praise. We give Him honor and glory for this is the day that He has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is the first Sunday of June 2020 and we are thankful to be in the house of the Lord. To lift up, to magnify and to glorify. For you that are in your home, that are joining us uh, through this virtual worship service, we thank God for you. We know that uh, it is the beginning of our three days congregational fast. Uh, and we want to just bless the name of the Lord. We want to give him praise, honor and glory. So arise with me this morning, even as we will bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. We thank you, Almighty God, for you are great and you are awesome. We thank you, Lord, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we bless you. We bless your name. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Father, we just say thank you for how great you are. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We bless you and we say thanks for all that you have done and what you are doing. And Father, we look forward to spending it. Father, this time with you uh, in that you are awesome. Uh, knowing, mighty God, that uh, you are able to do what no other can do. Uh, so we lift a praise in the atmosphere in saying, thank you, Lord. Uh, in saying, God, you are awesome and wonderful. Uh, Father, just have thine own way today. Uh, let, uh, mighty God, your spirit arise in this place. Uh, that there shall be an overflow of the anointing. Uh, to break yokes and undo heavy burden. Uh, let your spirit flow flow in the midst uh, through the worship. Uh, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, as the worship flow into the atmosphere uh, that change shall be broken, uh, that healing and deliverance shall take place. Uh, we declare the anointing even upon the leader and those that play that they shall play skillfully uh, under that anointing mighty God. Uh, that even though it's a virtual service we are declaring uh, that the power and the spirit of the living God will touch and free people in their very home from bondage and from captivity. We declare this morning an awesome time in your presence. Mighty God have your way. Touching lives and bringing wholeness to those mighty God that are broken. We thank you that you are mender of the broken. Mighty God just have your way. We say thank you and we love you Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless you and we give you the honor. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. Saints of God, put your hands together for the Lord. He is good. He is awesome. I know many of you are excited because of the announcement that you have heard uh, yesterday that services will be open or worship, places of worship. Uh, truly, this place of worship has never been an hour. So those of you that are looking at, at me this morning know that uh, we still have to consider a lot of protocol uh, and whatever is being done uh, at this time. Uh, we will rejoice and there will come a time where we will be able to open fully. We will give you further announcement as we go along, but definitely we will not be in our numbers out next week, Sunday. Reason being there are some stuff that need to be put in place at one hour will not be sufficient for what we have to get done in the service so we continue our virtual service for those of you uh, you know that are excited and running out ensure that you have your mask ensure that you have your hand sanitizers uh, so when you come out you can be admitted into the service further down uh, amen we're giving god thanks and we want to bless the name of the lord uh, so at this time we want to put our hands together and welcome sister crystal and she will take us into a time of worship uh, hallelujah blessed be the name hallelujah. of the lord uh, Bless you, Lord. So 
is for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. We are children of the Most High God. And there is a place for us in His house. Amen. We thank God for we live in a hope. We know that God can't lie and He gives His promises that He has gone. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And we live in that hope knowing that one day we will join Him in glory land. And we thank God for the presence and the power of Jehovah God today in the house. We thank God for all of you that took the time to prepare your communion so that we can have the covenant meal. It is the first Sunday of uh, June 2020, as I said to you. And we would normally partake of the covenant meal. You're a child of God in that you have repent, you have turned from your wicked or sinful ways. And you have accepted Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. And you continued in that you did as Jesus did in the book of Matthew chapter 3. He went into the water. He walked down to meet John, John the Baptist. And he allowed him to baptize him. So that by example, he has led his body or his church. And he was baptized. And we are his children and we follow the same principles. So you are baptized, you continue to live for the Lord. This morning you should partake of the Holy Communion or the Covenant meal. As I say to you, people believe you can live anyhow and partake. You will be judged according to your lifestyle. If you partake unworthily, if you partake not acknowledging him as Lord, but you have many other things as Lord in your life or people. God wants our utmost attention and he wants that place where he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So even as you are doing it home, we do it prayerfully and we do it carefully because it is a sacred uh, ceremony. The communion or the covenant meal is a sacred ceremony. So get your bread. Get your wine, and we're going to partake of Holy Communion. Amen? in your name. I declare that they are recipients of the finished work on the cross, that even as you were whipped for us, even mighty God, as you bled for us, we are thankful today that by your stripes we are healed. Today we partake knowing mighty God uh, that had it not been for the cross, we would not have been able to have this opportunity. So we say thank you with our grateful heart, Father. We say thank you for your body. We say thank you for your body today. We bless and we sanctify this wafer that is a representative of it, a symbol of your body. In Jesus' mighty name, let us partake of the bread. We lift the wine. 
The wine represents his blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power to smite the devil. Power to keep you walking in a path of victory. Power over all the powers of darkness. This blood has given us the victory over sin, shame, death, hell, and the grave. We are in a blessed position today because uh, of this wine which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are thankful. Father, we say thank you. We bless the wine. Uh, we are declaring the blessings of the Lord uh, that as your people partake, we will partake sober-minded, uh, understanding the benefits and the in Christ realities. Uh, I declare the blessings of the Lord. I declare it sanctify. And even those with ailments in their body, as they partake, they shall receive the healing perks and benefits. I declare healing. I decree deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in this fast, as we partake, we are saying, God, restore. Lord, revive. Lord, strengthen. Lord, empower to do what they could not have done before. Enlightenment, mighty God. For those that are struggling, I declare the struggle is over as they partake. We just bless and sanctify this wine. In Jesus' mighty name, let us partake of the wine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We say thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. How great, how awesome is his name. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name. We bless his holy name. We say thank you, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, we exalt your name. Oh, we bless you, mighty God. Hallelujah. We worship, we worship, we worship. Facebook live page, streaming live, and we thank God for the many of you from the various nations, from for the covenant partners, for the friends of Lighthouse, you that take the time to tune in while the service is actually live, and those of you that, you know, may share and people will tune in maybe after, we say the Lord bless you today, even as the purpose of this is to reach as many as we can, and that the word of God will continue to have free course. So we bless the Lord for all of you that take the time to engage in texting and to encourage us as we continue to do the work of the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless you. May he continue to shower down upon you. How many of you today feel like receiving a blessing from heaven and open heaven? How many of you feel like receiving something from above? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe it's a good time to connect with the heaven on this day that we will receive. You know, I know that there are many that I need to pray for. 
after the service and they called me during the course of uh, last week, uh, uh, well, even up to yesterday, and uh, I told them in the fast I will do what I have to do. Uh, a sister, I do not know if she's tuned in, but they were asking about the oil. Uh, Lighthouse Empowerment Sanctuary wanted me the oil. I must know you before I bless oil. It is not a ritual that is done. Anybody can use the oil and anybody can bless oil, but the thing about it, it's a sacred thing and uh, we do it in such a way that God will be honored. We don't give it out like that. So uh, once uh, I do it personally when I'm blessing the oil, amen. So those of you that are questioning on the oil and the blessing of the oil, yes, I bless oil, but I must know your lifestyle because it's a sacred thing and we must be sold out to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord bless you and we thank God for all of you. I said to you on Thursday evening, how many of you remember the word on Thursday? Let me see if anybody remember. What was the word about on Thursday? Somebody could text it to me. Hallelujah. What was the word about on Thursday? Anybody can tell me? I have some prayer points for you. Hallelujah. Brother Arnaldo? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. texting in and telling you anything there? Not as yet. Oh, they are quiet. They're quiet right now. We are they're trying to go back in the archives and see what I spoke on. Yeah, they're, trying, they're going to rewatch the uh, service. So we spoke on Matthew, and we spoke on Matthew chapter 4. And we spoke on temptation. Hallelujah. And Jesus being tempted. But he never yielded to temptation. He used the word, it is written. And in your fast, you're going to be tempted. Amen. But it is written, right? Amen. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. Do you have anybody texting in at this time? Yeah, so um, um, Cassie. St. John, she said uh, Matthew chapter 4. Right, handling God's word skillfully, yes. Um, so we thank God, hallelujah. Karen said, um, handling God's word skillfully, as I said before. Amen. Um, we just had cleaning and sanitation from Sister Cleo. Cleaning and sanitation. That's an interesting one. Yeah. All right, but we continue to remember the word of God, yes. Jesus being tempted by Satan, do not yield, but resist the devil. Amen. You're going to resist the power of darkness. Child of God is good to recap. Amen. Yeah. And on this day of prayer and fasting, we recap because we continue with Matthew chapter 4 from verses 12. We close at verses 11 on Thursday evening. We run with verses 12. Let me give you the prayer point. So the last thing that remains in your spirit is the word of the mighty God. Amen. <laughs> All right, so we're going, and uh, some of your prayer points. The first one, I would like for each individual to, op to ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding. It is in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 8, so that you will be enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling. Many people are in Christ but don't know the hope of their calling. They do not know the blessed hope that awaits them. So in this fast, I would like you in your prayer time to ask God to open the eyes of your understanding so there will be an excitement in your spirit to serve in that you will be able to see with the eye of faith or that sixth sense of faith uh, so you can see the blessed hope of your calling. Uh, how many of you know that we have hope in Jesus Christ? Uh, Amen. Hallelujah. So that's one of the points. Uh, the second point is I would like you to pray the word uh, that the word of God will continue to have a free course for the church of Jesus Christ and the five flow or fall as they say ministry that we will be effective witnesses. So point number two is pray that the word of God will continue to have free course. Amen. For the church of Jesus Christ and the five flow ministry that we will effective, be effective witnesses and relevant in this season to minister healing 
and deliverance and as God lead. Amen. It is important, as I say to you, that we be a, an effective witness. So that's your second point. The second point have a lot in it. You want me to repeat it one more time? Pray. The word of God will have, will continue to have free course. And the church of Jesus Christ and the fivefold ministry that we will be effective witnesses and relevant in this season and to minister healing and deliverance. Amen. So we have that second point. The third point. We want to continue to remember the prayer of salvation for our loved ones. For our backsliders. For friends and family and communities where you have back certain people, we want to continue to pray for them and that they will be able to find their way back to the mighty God, that their hearts will be softened, and where the enemy have deceived them, and that they will again turn to God and walk in the light of the mighty God. It's important that we remember our community and our loved ones, the prayer of salvation. Hallelujah. Uh, point number four, pray for our nation. With respect to our borders, this is direct to Trinidad and Tobago, and those of you that are viewing from other nations, you would know how to pray for your nation, as we would pray, yes, we would pray for your nation, but you will be in a better position to know where you are to head the point. Pray for the nation with respect to our borders and the final phases that in the opening up of our country, that it will be according to the plan and purpose of the mighty God. Amen. It's important that we pray in accordance to the will of God. And for those that are looking in, maybe from the United States, from Canada, from the United Kingdom, and from regional Barbados, Jamaica, wherever around the world you are looking in from, you would know with respect to your borders and your government, so you can personalize it for you and your country as well, even as we will remember each other. Amen? Hallelujah. As we continue, point number five, take time to pray for our upcoming elections in Trinidad and Tobago. It is important that the nation be governed by people that will remember Jehovah God. Uh, in this time of challenges, especially when legislation had to be drafted under the medical section and things are, the, the country was closed down or many a country was closed down or affected by this coronavirus, uh, you know, uh, it had a lot of setbacks. Uh. So in this time, we want to remember the nation of Trinidad and Tobago as we will head into an election season uh, that God's will be done. I know the U.S. is also heading to the polls. Uh, so those that are in the U.S., you continue to pray for your nation. We continue to pray for your nation as well. And whatever other country may be heading to the polls, uh, we want to remember that it will be a God thing when it is set up. Uh, God chooses uh, to elect uh, or to raise up whomever because he's sovereign. Uh, he can do, uh, you know, anything. God is more than able. So we pray that the will of God will be done. Uh, and our sixth point is that uh, uh, with respect to our regional and international countries, uh, including all affected by COVID-19, uh, that a shift will take place uh, for life outside of the home to flow again uh, without the spread of the virus uh, and without chaotic scenes. Uh, that life outside of the home will bloom again. Amen, somebody? I know many people are tired uh, in, in their home and the countries are being opened up. Uh, but in opening up, you want your life to bloom and uh, not to go down or to die because of the virus that is still in the atmosphere. So we continue to pray the word of God uh, and pray specific prayers, amen? We pray specific prayers. Uh, and the last point I'll give you is point number seven. Uh, let's remember those that are hospitalized, those that are shut in, uh, those that are lonely, uh, and those that may be going through situations and they uh, have, excuse, no help. Uh, Let's remember to pray for them. Uh, sometimes you may have people in the local church or in your community. Sometimes during the time of prayer and fasting, God will minister to you.
to give somebody a call, uh, all of that is a time of ministration and being a blessing. So God wants us to function on that high dimension. Let's remember them in our prayer and uh, the body of Christ in general, the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's remember each other as we take this prayer to a high level today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., our hour of power. On Tuesday at 7 p.m., our hour of power. Amen. I trust you got all of the announcements. Did you? Amen. The prayer points, I should say. Now, we want to look into the Word of God in Matthew chapter 4, from verses 12. All found? Amen. Well, so Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. No, she have it from verse 1, from verse 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Galilee is also known as Lake Genesaret. In the New Testament, you will find it. It has different names. And it is said that Galilee is between 13 to 17 miles in length. And it's about 7 miles in width, the broadest part of the Sea of Galilee. We went, we drove, well, boat on the Sea of Galilee. We took the boat and we went out there. When we went to the land of Israel in 2018, June 2018, and it's a beautiful place going out there. It's beautiful. We actually saw where Jesus performed many of his miracles. And just connecting with the areas that he walked and connecting with the miracles that was performed is just awesome. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And looking into the Word of God, for some of you, you may want to know what happened here in verse 12. Because Jesus was baptized in chapter 3 by John. John did not want to baptize Jesus. He was the forerunner for Jesus. But something happened when the Lord spoke to him. And child of God, sometimes God will ask us to do tasks that we Think that we are not capable of doing. Uh, John did not want to baptize Jesus. How many of you know that? Uh, he was saying uh, that I'm not even worthy to unlace uh, your shoe or your sandal. Uh, and you are asking me to baptize you. And Jesus had to tell him, yes, you have to baptize me or else you cannot be a part uh, of this work or the kingdom. Uh, and he was willing to baptize him. Uh, do not underestimate uh, yourself and what God will call you to do. Uh, John baptized Jesus. Uh, and Bible says after the baptism, uh, even uh, the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, descended as a dove upon him. Uh, and uh, the dove uh, is a symbol of peace. Well, many of you that will know, it's a symbol of deep peace, the dove. That is one, uh, you know, uh, that I have learned a long time ago. Uh, and some people, when they're getting married, they will release a lot of white doves uh, because it represents peace. Uh, when Jesus was baptized, uh, that dove sat on his shoulder and it represents the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is then because the peace of God, the peace of God came fully. This is my beloved son uh, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, now, for some of you that have a lot of questions, you would want to know, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed in Galilee. So the work began in the Judean desert, in the wilderness. And Jesus is now hearing one that run for him, or the forerunner, and he's hearing he's cast into prison and Jesus departed. Now, I can see and hear some of you that are thinkers and talkers. But why would Jesus depart? Because John was doing his work. John was preparing the way for him. But there was a situation that arose because uh, the book of Matthew and some of the books and the chapters is not in chronic, chronological uh, order or it's not according to date. So what happened here is that uh, John, uh, he had... Uh, a situation uh, where he confronted uh, Herod's 
for being with his brother's wife. And he was put in prison for speaking the truth and speaking the gospel. Amen. It's not in chronological order, but this is a situation that happened here. And let's just flip to Matthew chapter 11. And I want you to put a bookmark on it. We'll come back to it. Amen. I will show you what was happen happening even while John was in prison. He was still listening and continuing his service. Some of us, if we are thrown in prison for the gospel, we will not be able to function. So Bible says, and leaving Nazareth, he came, that's verse 30 now, and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. That is, it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, that light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, child of God, Jesus' public ministry began. When you look at the history, you will realize that, that the end of John's ministry came and Jesus' ministry immediately began. But in Jesus beginning his ministry, preparation took place. There are many that want to serve God and there is no preparation. When the Lord Jesus came on the scene, and though he was Jesus, he prepared himself uh, to honor Abba Father properly. It is important that you make preparation. He entered his fast. He went into 40 days of fasting. We have to recognize that there must be an order set if we want to eat the good of the land. If we want to flow in the demonstration of the power like the apostle flow in the book of Acts. It's the book of action. And we are seeing so many great miracles birthed even in the, uh, the gospels and in the book of Acts even as we go through the New Testament as well. Child of God, you want to be a mighty man or mighty woman of God, it means that it is demanded of you to make great sacrifices in obedience. Some people will never fast, but they want to perform the miracles. It's impossible to perform the miracles with God if you do not hold fast to his principles and his virtues. Amen. You may perform miracles, but it may not be under the hand of the mighty God because the book of Thessalonians says, they perform lying wonders and miracles. You have to know if you are walking with God and you are working with God. You have to know the times and the season that you are in. And child of God, if you are not walking and working with God, the things that are coming to you, you will not be able to fight off. This is a good season. In this time where we were in shut in, it was a season to prepare to walk closer with God, to hear his voice daily. Many today are saying, I do not know the voice of the Lord. How can you carry the message when you are still unsure of God's voice. We must know the voice of the Lord. He said, my sheep know my voice. Saints of God, we got to practice knowing the voice of God. Amen. Amen. We don't practice only knowing the voice of the preacher. Knowing the voice of the preacher is good, but you need to know the voice of God first. I tell people all the time, you know, give God what is due unto him. Give God the glory. Spend quality time with him because he gave himself on Calvary for us. We have to know what we are about. Many people say God, but they don't spend time with God. To go places with God, it means you must have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. 
some people are comfortable with relationship. Look in the natural world, and you will see husbands and wives, the type of relationship that different home and different family will have. And if you do a census of it, you will realize that people are very different, and they let anything go. They live anyhow and believe that is how it should be. God is not like that. God is God of order and uh, decency. Bible said that he's God of decency and order. And he loved things that are in alignment. Uh, even when the priests uh, and the people of old uh, had to enter the temple, it had specific instructions. Uh, when they had to make uh, uh, the talit or the zitzit, uh, uh, they would uh, a certain amount of string, the colors, and how it will be woven. Uh, they would have had to follow the instruction uh, to have the pressure uh, because the talit or the uh, the zitzit that they would put on it, uh, it was given specific instruction. Uh, God is God of instruction. He's God of divine order. And if we cannot learn to take order, we will be in church, but we will miss God. Amen. Amen. How many of you understand you can be in church every Sunday and still miss God? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We can be in church every Sunday and we can still miss God. Whatever you are going through, let's go through with the God of our salvation. Amen. Whether it's a good time, whether it's a difficult time, whether it's a down time, whether it's a time of tra tragedy, a time of trauma, or a time of receiving great accolades, let us learn to run with the mighty God. Now, as I get back, you know, even as Jesus said, you know, he began his ministry and he said, repent. There comes a time in people's life uh, that they must turn from their wicked ways if they want to enter into eternal life of the kingdom of the mighty God. Uh, John was preaching the message of repentance uh, and he was speaking uh, about turning from your wicked ways. Uh, child of God, uh, this is the season that we need to preach uh, because the time uh, where uh, Jesus is coming is soon uh, and we need to tell people like it is, uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Just like in the days of John the Baptist when he preached, telling the people that there is one greater that is coming. And he was telling them to repent and be baptized. This is a season for the church to tell the people or to evangelize and be that strong witness that people can see Jesus in us. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. You must know that your life uh, must be in right standing with God uh, as you stand as a witness for him. Because the first thing they will tell you is your life is not in order. Amen, somebody. So it is important that we know that this is the season. He said uh, in verse 17, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walking by, I ministered to you some time ago with this. Uh, walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, that was the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He officially began, but he put in everything in order. When you look at Matthew 1, 2, 3, and 4, things were put in order so that the ministry of our Lord and Savior, his public ministry, can actually be built in. What have you put in order so that God can use you in ministry? What are you doing so that God can elevate you? What are you doing so God can use you under his influence or under his power so that you can show a demonstration or have a demonstration that others will be won into the kingdom? There must be a discipline you. Amen. You must be disciplined. Not when you feel to read the Bible and when you feel to pray, you got to make time to do these things daily. Amen. 
It is important that we recognize that serving God is not just about things. It is not just the bread and fish, but it means sacrifice. It means spending time. It means checking your life daily, self-introspection. It means continuing in the faith. It means forgiveness, allowing, even though people will do you things daily, you are releasing forgiveness. Amen. Serving the Lord is beautiful. And sometimes you will meet bumps in the road that you may not feel so beautiful. But God keeps us in all of this time. Amen. Anybody ever meet, uh, you know, people in the road that will make you feel a certain way uh, as you go this Christian life? Uh, but you know what? God is our keeper and he's our yeah. hope. Uh, he's our helper and he's our friend that's stick it closer than our brother. So even in the fast day, you might meet somebody that may say something that is off to you. You may meet somebody that don't care about you. You may meet somebody that don't care about your well-being. Uh, but at the end of it all, uh, we know what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary is worth it all. The sacrifice is worth the obedience. Is worth daily walking, taking up our cross and following. Amen. Daily, you know, crucifying the flesh. How many of us are crucifying the flesh? It is important to know that we ought to stand righteous. No matter what people are saying, righteousness is still in fashion according to God. Amen. Righteousness is still in fashion. Amen. Be fashionable in righteousness. Tell your neighbor. Be fashionable in righteousness. Hallelujah. Righteousness is for every season. Amen. Righteousness is for every season. And the message that Jesus preached, we are commanded to preach the same message. We are commanded to do the same works. He said that even greater works we shall do. How many are ready to do this work and to enter into greater works? This is the season that the church is supposed to be preparing themselves to do greater works. When we come out, are we going to prepare ourselves? Hallelujah. Some people are waiting when they come out to now begin the preparation. The preparation should have been done while we were at home. Invest in quality time. Serving the Lord in spirit and in truth. Taking in the messages and being in that place where you want more of God. You are dedicated to the service of the mighty God. You see, when we come out and God sent people to the ministry, his work, his name can be exalted because it's a matter of speaking the word and seeing the miracles. A matter of speaking the word and seeing the manifestation. Why? There will be no laying on of hands because we have protocols to follow. They want no, no contact, no hugging. So those of you that are very uh, touchy and connected uh, in hugging. Uh, you have to know it's a spiritual hug. It's not in the flesh anymore. It's in the spirit. Amen, somebody. A high five, it's in the spirit. Amen. Whatever you're doing in the social distancing stand, uh, not with God, but with your fellow men. Uh, so we have to come to a place uh, where we as ministers and disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, when we speak the word uh, because we live the life, we can see the miracle uh, because we do not know when next we can lay hand on the sick, sick so that they shall recover. Now it's just speaking the word and seeing results. Amen. Hallelujah. We cannot do what we used to do. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Amen. So we have to be sharp in our relationship. We have to love God and hate the devil. Amen. 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 When you love God, you will not be in love with the devil. It is important to walk with God. So John was now put into prison. And some of you, as I said in verse 12, some of you will wonder, why would Jesus leave and go? Jesus' life was in danger and it wasn't his time because he didn't, he was now starting his ministry. So he had, he had to leave from Nazareth and he had to go across to Galilee so that he can fulfill uh, what the prophet Isaiah was saying. Uh, I believe it is Isaiah chapter 9. Can we pull Isaiah chapter 9? I think it's 1 and 2. 
Jesus was the light that would come in. You see, it was speaking about the prophet Isaiah, one of the great Old Testament prophet who prophesied of the coming of the Messiah Christ and was talking about the Gentile people or these people that sat in darkness and they were just waiting for the light and this is the season that came in the book of Matthew chapter 4 where Jesus the light came in so the, the people that were Gentiles had an opportunity now to accept salvation these people that walk in darkness had an opportunity to receive the light the light came into their very space because he had to move from where he was because his life was in danger to go to that place so that he could minister and the scripture shall be fulfilled. Child of God, God have timing. And also the Jews would have known and they would have realized it's not that Jesus was not working per se through the law, but even as he would bring people to him and tell them repent, it was through grace. It was not that they had to go through all the system of the law. It was under the new covenant. Hallelujah. I thank God for the new covenant. Uh, the new dispensation uh, called the dispensation uh, of grace. Uh, I bless God uh, that even under grace we got the unmerited favor of God. Uh, and grace and mercy. Mercy gives us even, uh, you know, the penalty was death. But Christ ensured. He ensured that we had life rather than death. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter one, uh, nine, verse one, it says, nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first, uh, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun. And this is the same thing we're seeing in Matthew chapter four. And the land of Naphtali. And afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee and of the nations. Verse 2. The people that walk in darkness. Now look at it. Eh? Listen. Eh? Prophecies. How many hundred years eh, have been fulfilled as Jesus, eh, he crossed eh, from where he was to go to Galilee. Eh? Listen. The time and season. Eh, because I, as I said, uh, John was preaching in the Judean uh, desert, in the Judean wilderness. Eh, and now uh, uh, he was in prison because he made a correction and sometimes uh, when you tell people that they are doing wrong they want your head uh, like they did John the Baptist uh, but saints of God and friends today uh, we got to tell people what is the right thing uh, and sometimes you will be uh, you know rebuke or you will be hated uh, for the gospel's sake but it is all all right uh, because laid up for us is a crown of righteousness uh, we got to show light uh, and we got to show it by our lifestyle uh, in how how we live every day. It is important because we are carriers of a Shekinah glory. We are carriers of the Most High God and he will use us as we allow him to. He will use us mightily if we will give him our all. Bible is saying the people that walk in darkness. Once you are not a Jew, you are a Gentile and the Gentile people walk in darkness until Jesus came in the scene. Jesus opened the gates of mercy eh, to every human being on the planet. Eh, he opened that whoever it is eh, that they will be able to flow with him. Eh, and Bible tells us eh, they have seen a great light. Eh, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death eh, upon them eh, and the light shine. Eh, hallelujah. Jesus shine. Eh, he shone upon the Gentile. Eh, we the Gentile people have an opportunity eh, to serve God. Eh, at time God for the light. I thank God for the light of Christ. I thank God for Christ because he is able to do what no other can do. Amen. So it was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet and Jesus as he sat there it was being fulfilled as he moved across the Galilee. Child of God, it's important that you understand the times and the season that you are in. Sometimes I know reading the Bible can be a challenge, but you don't give up. You continue to read and reread. And read in modern day translation. You have basic English. You have the contemporary English version. And you have like the new King James version. These are some that you can read and help you to understand modern day English. 
but child of God, always go back to the King James Version so that you know some have missed out information. And we want to be able to do it right, amen, to the best of our ability. We may not know it all, but what we know is what God has placed in our hand, we will not mess it up. Hallelujah. So when we look at the word of God, the light came. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy for the light of the mighty God? Hallelujah. How many of you are happy for that light of Jesus Christ? So Jesus' ministry officially began. And he called his first store. And in calling them, he gave them that unction from above. And they immediately responded, abandoning even the work that they would have done as fishers of the fishes. And now he says, I will make you fish of men. We are called to be fishers of men. We are called to draw men out of sin into the light, out of darkness into the light, away from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen. Amen. We are called to be an example. And when we go, as I said, to Matthew chapter 11, we are coming down. I want you to see what Jesus you know, and John, what was happening here with John. And Bible says, from verses 2 of chapter 11, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, hallelujah, and said unto them, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? So at time, you would have doubters, even though they would know the gospel. We had Thomas that was a doubter also. Sometimes you are with Jesus or you are speaking for him, but you are still in doubt. We gotta cast out every doubt, amen? Amen? amen. Hallelujah. And Bible says, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Sometimes Jesus is in our very presence to help, and we do not recognize him. How many of you? ever realize that when he's in our presence, don't miss it. Amen. Amen. When he comes in, it's to give us help. Whether it's a rebuke, it's for our betterment. Whether it's a blessing, it's for our betterment. Whatever he gives to us is actually for our advancement. Amen. So whether it's correction, reproof, or it's blessing, it's all for our advancement. If you would see from that perspective, you would live a blessed Christian life and a supernatural Christian life naturally. Because so, so many people are struggle in different ways. But your empowerment comes from the God of your salvation. If Paul and Silas could have done it, if Jesus, as he walked the earth and he told us sin will not have dominion over over us and he gave up even when Satan came to him he gave him the written word we can do it tell your neighbor we can do it also amen we can do it also in the name of Jesus hallelujah so you have to know and you have to be able to function at that high level where you know without a shadow of a doubt that whatever God has set up for you that you will accomplish amen it's important that you know it uh, all the time. Not sometime, but all the time. Hallelujah. And it says here, uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. So, a witness to the truth. Jesus is sending the message. Go testify about the miracles. People that will be coming into the church saints, they want to see a demonstration of God's power. That's why I'm saying it is important that every believer is beyond physical excitement. There must be spiritual preparation eh, that even as you overflow with excitement and you bubble forth in the flesh, eh, People, when they come to the house of the Lord, they must see a demonstration of God's power. Amen. So it means you must do your part and I must do my part. You must live the life and walk the walk and I must live the life and walk the walk. It's not only a talk the talk, but it's talk the talk and walk the walk. Amen. We have to do it all. Why? It is commanded of us to do it. And Jesus is saying, go and testify. Basically, go and tell them all what you have been seeing and hearing. So he said, the blind see, 
Hallelujah. This is a season for the blind to see. Amen, somebody. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Bible is clear. The message of Jesus was sending back to John. Hallelujah. It's to tell them the testimony of what is taking place on the earth because of the gospel, because of who Jesus is or who the Messiah is as he walked through. The Bible says in verse 6, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. There are many that are offended in Christ. There are many people that are offended. Yeah. From the time they hear the name of Jesus, they take offense. Yeah. Yeah. If you say you are going to church, no problem. But from the time you say you are born again, people have a big problem. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm born again. I'm washed in the blood. I'm baptized in the fire. I'm baptized in water. And I continue to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. In my posting, you will see a lot of Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. When you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt, when nobody is there for you, and you know that God is there for you, you cannot help but worship. You cannot help but bubble forth in praises. You cannot help but be that true worshiper of Jehovah God. God, when you know that you, you would have faced that, and the Lord said, no, I stopped that so that you can live and speak on my behalf. You can't help but praise him because you have extended time on the earth. When you have experienced the goodness of God, you can't help but shout his praises. And sometimes when we praise God, people turn up their eyes and turn up their nose and turn up their mouth. It's all right because you know what Jehovah God did for you. When when nobody care, God care. When nobody will come through for you, God find it the time to come through and make a way for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Rejoice in the God of your salvation because he took time out for us. Hallelujah. When it seems as though we were going down, you know, that place, that slippery, murky clay, the Lord see fit to extend his arm of mercy and grace and bring us out. Hallelujah. What joy in serving the Lord. What blessed hope we have in serving the Lord. The Lord cannot fail. Hallelujah. And the Lord, he keeps all of his promises. You got to learn to rejoice in the Lord. Bible said to rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Bible tells us to make that joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Let the land, let the people rejoice this morning. Why? We are coming into a time where even change is coming to the earth, even significant. We thank God that we are coming out of this COVID-19 operation stay at home. But in coming out, our life will be affected in another way that we can't have the normal. Yes, people will want to do what they are accustomed doing, but you have to take the precautionary measures. But in all of that, we are rejoicing because we can still serve the Lord. We are still in the land of the living. If you got to wait until everything is perfect, you will not come out and serve the Lord, or you will not serve the Lord. But in your very trial, in your very testing time, give God what is due unto Him. Bless His name. Give Him glory. Shout a praise. Proclaim the name that is above every other name. Rejoice and give thanks daily because He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important that we understand that we should not be offended by the name or the workings of the mighty God. Hallelujah. And I want to show you Let's skip and go to verse 10. For this is he, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So it speaks here of the forerunner and the preparation for the blessing somebody. 
He said, Verily I say unto you, and look at this word, a commendation here for John the Baptist. He lost his hair, but he lost his hair because he stood righteous. He was a forerunner. Amen. Amen. The king made a promise and an oath. He didn't want to give John the Baptist head, but he couldn't go back on his word. And sometimes, uh, parental influence, when they are not of God, can be destructive. And that young lady danced before the king. And her desire, when she went to her mother, was the head of John the Baptist. And she danced, and she danced beautifully from what is said. And she got her wish of the head. His body was left in prison and his head came in a charger to them. He had to send, issue the, that instruction. It's sad, but he lost his head for the gospel. He lost his head for righteousness. He lost his head for a holy stand because he confronted sin. And sometimes when we confront sin, people become angry with us. But listen, sin must be confronted. Hallelujah. We will not sit uh, when there is sin in the church. Uh, we will not sit quiet uh, when there is sin in the camp. Uh, when there is sin in the camp, it must be exposed. Uh, and we must teach people or tell people uh, this is not the way to go. Or why? It is the word of God. Uh, in many uh, churches today, it is okay to have sin uh, and to sit in the maids. Uh, once God give me directive, I will address it. Uh, why? The church of Jesus Christ must be an example. Yeah. We must be a witness. We cannot walk in sin. Sin and unrighteousness is not for the child of God. We are called to a better covenant and a better life in Christ Jesus. We cannot take chances. You cannot be, you know, a slacker or one that will live any old how. You cannot have your own laws like common law is an outlaw for the child of God. You have to get married read. You have to do it right. It is biblical. So you cannot take the communion or the covenant meal and say, well, you know, God knows. God knows. That is why he said, get married. Amen. Amen. Child of the living God and friends, you may not like the word about its correction. A lot of people will go to hell because of sexual sins and immorality. Why? They want to do what God said, but not as God said it. They want to do it in their own way, how they think it should be done. God laws must be upheld. Amen. God laws is different from that of the law of the land. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is sovereign. His government is theocratic. Amen. It's not democratic. He's sovereign, so it's theocratic. Hallelujah, somebody. You enjoying the word this morning? And Bible says here in verse 11, Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater. You are seeing that? Jesus himself is saying this. They have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the superiority of the new generation, of the new dispensation, sorry. Spiritual kingdom. God the Father, he knows all things. And Jesus, his son, he commended. A commendation was made for John the Baptist. What are you willing to lose for this gospel today in the fast? Hallelujah. What are you willing to lose in this fast? I always say, you must be willing to lose your sin and shame. You must be willing to let go those things that God wants you to let go of. Because some of us, we hold on to things, to people that God wants us to let go. In this fast, when you do your self-introspection in praying that your eyes of your understanding be open up, See who God wants you to let go of because some people cannot go where you are going. They will keep you back. Amen. Because by choice, they choose not to go with you. 
By choice, they choose to serve uh, the devil. By choice, they have chosen to be different, not according to the word, uh, but according to the world. Uh, you must understand, uh, if they are keeping you back, uh, and it's your time to move away when your season is over, move. You can't wait forever for people who don't want to run with you. And people that are not going with you, how will you be able to continue the race if you are waiting on them? It's time that we release those that are not going with us. Amen. We pray for them, but we keep running. Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer, but we keep running because there is a race to finish. And if you wait until they are ready, you can miss your timing. You can miss your opportunity. You can miss your entire life in ministry. You can miss the blessing that God has in store for you. You can miss the divine connection that God will bring to you. You can miss the favor that God has for you. Why? You are waiting on people that are not ready to run. Let those that are ready run and those that want to wait, wait. But you make a choice to Rejoice in the Lord, uh, running the last mile of the way. You gotta run with Jesus uh, and run for Jesus uh, because it's time uh, that the church understand uh, that we are the pillars in society uh, that have the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And we need to recognize that sin will not have dominion. We need to address sin. Hallelujah. Many believers are afraid. I have never been afraid to address sin. I'll tell you why. I live a holy life. So I don't have anything to hide. And you know, sometimes people think that uh, because they may be given, you can't address sin. That's not the Bible. Even if you are giving your tithe and offering, and you're doing it wrong, I still have to address the sin. Amen. Amen. If you choose to withhold it, it's between you and God. God will always raise up another that will give. I have learned that a long time ago. Once you are under sin, you cannot progress in Christ. You may have earthly things or possession, but that doesn't mean that you are rich in God, or it doesn't mean that God is pleased with you. When God is pleased with you, you will know because it is beyond your earthly possession. It is a heart uh, that is resting with him. Uh, it is a confidence and a joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's uh, just in that mind and in that spirit where you want to be in the place of God. Uh, you want to be with him. Uh, you just want to be with him. Uh, so you have to know uh, that the freedom that you have and the power that you have uh, in Jesus Christ, don't take it for granted. Amen, Amen saints of God, in the fast and in closing. I want you to make your mind up for some tough knocks. You may not lose your head like John the Baptist, but stand for righteousness. Encourage others in the faith. Live a life that when the neighbors see you or the community see you goes by, they can say, there goes a child of God. Live your life that will be positively impactful in your community and in your nation. I've seen where people have gotten earthly power and because of the earthly power that they have received, because of the God that gave them and allowed them that power, they have turned their back on God. Such a sad thing. I've seen people who have gotten jobs and say, you know what, I wasn't working and God would have blessed them with job and when they got the job, they forgot the address of the church or they forget the address of any church yeah. and they continue, all they do is work because they're so in love. I've experienced where people started with God and then many a things come and choke their life with God, the cares of this world. I have seen where people were running and who spoke into their air, they stopped. They stopped running as they would have run. I have seen in this life where people who say, that they are of God uh, when contrary winds blow and they won't anchor in the world uh, that they end up falling away. Child of God in this prayer and fast, anchor yourself in the place of God fully. That whoever will speak into your ear, 
it will not disrupt your spirit. Uh, you must know when to cut off. Uh, there comes a time in your life that you just got to cut. Amen. You just got to cut some things and some people off uh, so that you can flourish. Uh, it is the year of divine flourishing. Uh, it is the year despite what we are facing. Uh, God said we will flourish. Uh, and I'm thankful to God that we are flourishing despite what we are going through. Uh, that God has kept his promise. Uh, and God continue to provide. Amen. Uh, we bless the Lord normally on first Sunday in this house. We would normally bless oil and we will do the seeds. Uh, and do baby dedication. But again, because of the protocols and everything that we will have to observe even when we come out again, uh, it will be done differently. Things will be different. Uh, prepare your mind mentally, uh, emotionally, and spiritually for the new normal, which will be a bit different. Uh, but we will still get the job done because uh, there is no distance in prayer. Amen? Amen? You may just have to hold your baby, and I will dedicate your baby for you when your baby is allowed to come in the sanctuary. Amen? Uh, we are giving God thanks, and we are blessing the name of the mighty God. Let us stand to our feet as we will pray this morning. Uh, Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Uh, we give you honor, and we give you glory. We thank you for all that are tuned in today. We thank you, mighty God, uh, that in this the fast that you have called, Lord, that the bands of wickedness shall be broken today. I declare healing and deliverance over the airwaves. Uh, I declare the peace of God uh, for those that are looking in and have asked for prayer. Father, I declare that you will touch them. Touch, touch. I pray for our sister that is going into the fast, mighty God. Uh, and continue to struggle for full deliverance. I declare that Akina is lifted right now into your presence in this fast, that there shall be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. A turnaround in the name of Jesus. I declare the righteous blood of Jesus. I command every wicked spirit that entered in to reception uh, to lose her body and her mind right now. Uh, I declare today in the name of Jesus, a restoration continues. Uh, healing and deliverance continues. Uh, the fire of the mighty God uh, continue to bring uh, even that healing upon her mind. Uh, I cancel the plan of the enemy and I declare through the power of the mighty God uh, that the wind of change is reaching her. Father, right now, I continue, continue to declare healing for those that are affected in their bodies in one way or another. Whatever the situation in the body, whatever healing is required, I speak healing from the very crown of the head to the sole of the feet in the name of Jesus. Every ulcer, we declare every ulcer that have become irritated, and affecting your health, I declare the healing virtue and the balm of the mighty God. Bring healing. I declare those that are bowed down because of arthritis, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I send your word, and I declare healing shall take place in the name of Jesus. For those that are having family war and conflicts, Father, where there are dispute, I decree that the peace of the mighty God shall prevail in the midst of their challenges. I declare the wind of the Holy Ghost shall blow upon them and their situation. Where there is discouragement, I speak right now the spirit of encouragement. Yes. I cancel that spirit of discouragement right now. And I declare encouragement. I declare strength. I declare peace. I declare joy in that life and in that home. I declare joy, receive it. I decree joy in the mighty name of Jesus. That the joy of the Lord will overflow you. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. We release joy in your very home in the mighty name 
of Jesus. We speak the joy of the Lord all around. And the angels of the Lord encamp it round about. We declare mighty God that they shall experience a new season. We thank you for victory. We thank you for victory, mighty God. We pronounce the blessing. Father, right now we lift your people. Those that are far, those that are near, those that are in various nations. We lift them. Even as they will have their prayer in their very mind or in their heart, what is taking place. I declare right now a touch from heaven, a ministration from heaven to break the bands of wickedness and to undo heavy burden. I declare that chains are falling. I declare that fetters are breaking right now. Father, we pronounce and we proclaim the shout of the king in the midst of the very situation. I proclaim Jesus is the Lord and Jesus is bigger than the situation. I proclaim the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I proclaim the lion of the tribe of Judah arise in this situation and give them a victory. I speak good health one more time in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel generational curses. I cancel ancestral curses that have hovered over your life and suppress you from going forward. Let there be a cutting off point now in the mighty name of Jesus that as you press, you press in great faith. I decree and declare that even as you partake of communion today, I declare over your life that you have the victory in Jesus' mighty name. I declare the blood of Jesus is upon you, surrounds you. I decree and declare that the fire of God is around your life, that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And whatever come your way, you will arise in great faith, knowing that your God is able. Father, we say thank you, Lord, and we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, mighty God. We just bless you and we thank you for your people. We commit all the people into your hand. And we say, Lord, have thine own way. Have thy own way. We thank you for those that continue to be a blessing to the ministry. With those that continue to assist in the food distribution. With those that continue, Father God, who have come and they have asked, uh, Lord, to give, to help pledge, to cover costs uh, of expenses. We thank you for them that in whatever way that they are communicating, we bless you for them uh, that have seen the need, mighty God, to keep these doors open, uh, uh, this building. Uh, and we thank you for those that have support, uh, even with finances, mighty God, in this time. Uh, in this the fast, we pray a blessing upon them, uh, that, Lord, that your blessing uh, will come upon them and overtake them, uh, even as they have seen the need, Father, to continue to invest, uh, to keep your house open, so that, uh, Lord, you will both be meeting your house, and your house uh, can continue to carry on. Uh, Father, we continue to say thank you for all that you have done and what you are doing. Uh, we bless your people. We bless your people today. We bless your people today. We bless your people, mighty God, uh, for even as they have been faithful uh, in what you have given to them, uh, even mighty God, I'm saying continue to bless them, uh, that there will be no lack in their homes, uh, that whatever they need it is provided, uh, that whatever you have given to them, may they rejoice knowing uh, that you always take care of your people. Uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, and we rejoice in knowing uh, that great is the Lord uh, and greatly to be praised uh, in the city of our God, in the mountains of his holiness. We bless you, Lord, and we say thank you, Lord. Almighty God, we just bless you. We just bless you, and we say thank. We say thanks, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Saints of God, we give God thanks for each and every one of you. According to our clock, it's 10, 15, and we thank God for a time in his presence today. Um, for those of you that have oil to bless that that are members, you can text me, and you know how it goes. But I, I, most of you would have had because I blessed a lot of you uh, last week, uh, last month, and the month before that. Amen. Uh, so we are giving God thanks, uh, and those of you with a situation, uh, um, situation that are pressing, and I told you, call me today. You can give me a text, uh, and I'll call back uh, so that we can proceed with the prayer because some are personal prayer. Amen. Uh, 
and we will do what we have to do. Uh, so God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, we are on, as I say, on Monday and Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, we thank God for this time of fasting. Uh, remember the prayer points. Uh, remember to share it with those that may not have been tuned in for whatever reason. Uh, but that trust in God that they will connect up with the message and with the prayer point to floor. Because this is a time and a season of empowerment. Uh, don't miss the timing of God. Uh, when we miss the timing of God, we miss the blessing of God. Uh, when we miss the blessing of God, uh, we feel out of sync or out of joint. Uh, so we want to continue to flow with God, saints of God. Uh, it is wonderful serving the Lord uh, and we bless Him. So we just want to close in a word of prayer this evening, uh, you know, giving God just thanks for all that he has done. This morning, sorry. Uh, giving God thanks uh, for all that he has done. Amen. Uh, so, Father, we say thank you, Lord. We bless your name for all that you have done and what you are doing. We look forward for the anointing to continue to break you during this time that we will spend. I declare over every individual, over every believer, that as they spend quality time, they will reap a harvest. For we know that you are debtor to no man. And Father, we open ourselves that you will use us in this time and you will use us in this season. That you will speak to our very hearts and our very life. That we will be, uh, Father God, that we will be servants uh, knowing uh, that you are able to do all things. Uh, I thank you for every family represented, uh, every nation represented, uh, every home represented here today. And I pronounce the blessings of the Lord which make rich and add no sorrow. As even the face open up and more will go out to work tomorrow. And uh, even uh, Friday where more will open up again. Uh, Father, I declare your protection uh, and I declare your blessing upon your people and upon the nation uh, that even as the people will go out to work uh, I'm declaring God's safety on the nation roads. Uh, I declare mighty God with respect uh, to even uh, other um, uh, citizens of this country coming in uh, from the ver various cruise ship and from the various nation. Uh, Lord, that uh, there will not be a resurgence of the COVID-19 in our nation. Uh, we are declaring mighty God that uh, even as uh, the numbers have been minimal and it have been kept down, uh, we are declaring it shall not rise in the name of Jesus, uh, but it shall uh, be maintained uh, at nil at this time and continue, mighty God. Uh, we are declaring, God, that uh, whatever we shall face, that we will face it in your name. Uh, whatever challenges come to us, uh, mighty God, the wisdom of heaven, uh, for those that are empowered to run the affairs of this nation, uh, that the wisdom of heaven will flow in them and through them, uh, even as you will allow others to speak into their air. I'm declaring mighty God uh, that uh, you will be seen in all things even as the weeks will come and go. We are thankful Father God uh, for the wind of change that is blowing upon this nation uh, we say Lord continue to have your divine way and we bless you in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. For those of you that are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries uh, or whatever it is the Lord bless you and may you enjoy your day or enjoy your week, whatever day it is that you are celebrating. The Lord bless you, bless you really good. For the members of the local house, Lighthouse Empowerment Sanctuary, remember the fast is on. Even though you are celebrating, you can celebrate before or you can celebrate after. Amen. So God bless you. We say thank you and we will see you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Blessings from the Lighthouse family. Hallelujah.